Hello guys, I'm Enzo and I'm back with another video of DSP MATLAB introductions and today I'm going to show you how to work with FFT. It is a pretty powerful tool that you should be familiar with and also it's something that you see a lot in your DSP courses in university or in, uh, out of universities or at work. So probably you should have a clear idea about FFT, okay? Fourier transform is something that uh, a scientist or a mathematician proved uh, that you can build a signal, a signal with a series of sinusoid. So in order to see and have a better understanding of this tool, we should uh, probably clear up some ideas. Okay, uh, we have a time sequence, okay, and we want to change it to frequency. We should use uh, FFT in order to change time to frequency. Okay, uh, let's see a plot uh, of a sinusoid, a couple of sinusoids that we have and uh, discuss the results. Uh, I already explained all the code in this part here in previous videos. Uh, plot, title, grid, signal, uh, how to make sinusoid, how to plot them. It's just a uh, brief overview of what we had before. We want to run the code until this part so we don't get confused. Okay. This is our signals. Let's make it bigger. Okay. Uh, first, we have a 5 hertz frequency sinusoid. It's run. It's uh, it's ran for I think four seconds. Uh, three seconds, and also. We have uh, 10 Hz frequency, 2 Hz frequency, and 40 Hz frequency. We plot them after each other. So you can see and compare them in a better way in order to have all of them in a 3, 6, 9, and 12 second of continuous signal. Okay, you can see the uh, orders. Of happening the of these frequencies first we have the 5 Hertz then we have the 10 Hertz then we have the 2 Hertz and after that we have the 40 Hertz okay we want to change this signal in the uh, last subplot and see uh, the meaning of this in the frequency domain okay in order to make that we have to use FFT code. FFT function needs to uh, receive the signal and also here uh, you can uh, put the number of FFT bins. We are not going to discuss uh, this one here but in order to have a good idea about it uh, you should probably know that, know that too. You can see also help here uh, but let's see the and focus on the meaning of the FFT and the output. Okay, the output of the signal is a complex number. It has real and imaginary values. We are working with the uh, absolute value of that complex numbers. So we want to take the absolute value of the Z which is the output of the FFT and also put the name of magnitude into it okay and we want to plot it but we don't to plot it just uh, really fast we don't to observe the meanings of the signal in it so in order to have uh, this meaningful plot we need to plot it between fs half fs on minus uh, half of fs and um, half of fs uh, fs is our sampling rate 
so here our sampling rate is 50 uh, 500 hertz we sampling the time domain and our time series uh, with 500 samples so this is really important and we want to divide these distance from uh, minus 250 to 250 with L samples L is our length of our signal so I want to uh, make sure that you have a good idea of this time uh, or this uh, uh, frequency X so in order to uh, really understand the meaning of FFT okay uh, let's move on and uh, do the rest I'm going to press F10 to complete the task okay let's see what we have here we have the signal between this value and this value so it doesn't make a lot of sense uh, it's from minus uh, P to minus half P and minus P so uh, something like this okay minus pi or P to pi so we want to make sure that this uh, thing change from zero to two pi. Okay. In order to make that clear, we need to use FFT shift. I'm going to use it in another uh, manner. Here you can uh, shift head Z, and we want to FFT shift. Okay, and then I want to mute it and okay. And then let's see what is the result here. FFG shift unrecognized function or variable of FFT. Sorry, I missed. Okay, okay. seems to be the problem here uh, I think I did something a little bit wrong here FFT shift of Z uh, oh sorry if <laughs> we want to plot this one not the uh, shift C and okay sorry for that okay this is better okay you see this is this zero is our signal in frequency zero we don't have any signal in frequency zero so frequency zero means the DC value means the meaning mean value of our signal okay don't uh, don't uh, focus on the negative part of the uh, frequency just focus on the positive it's just a, a symmetrical thing and you don't need it after uh, maybe your master degree or something like that so just focus on the positive part this is our 2 Hertz frequency if you zoom in you can see our frequency in 2 Hertz so it means that we have a frequency at 2 Hertz we are talking about this signal yes we have frequency at 2 Hertz we have frequency as 5 Hertz too yeah that, that's correct this is the one and we have also a peak at 40 and also at 10 let's see in the signal one of them should be in forty, another one at ten. 
Okay, this is the 10. This is the 14. So you may notice this one, this uh, side lobes. Uh, this is problem about uh, sampling frequency. Uh, if we use a higher sample frequency, we should uh, have a clear uh, lobes and also a higher, uh, really, more resolution uh, peak. So, this is our frequency domain. Let's zoom out and see. What does be? okay from the zero frequency to the uh, infinity we have four frequencies and we have here too okay but you have a very good definition of time here but you don't have any idea about the frequency and here you have a really good definition of the frequency pins but you don't have any idea about the time of the occurrence of these frequencies. For example, this is the last one, but uh, it's not a <laughs> good example. Okay, here 10 is the third frequency that we have, but here is the second one, so you cannot tell when this one happened so this is our problem uh, with these two realms or these two domains and uh, this call this is called uh, Heisenberg uncertainty you cannot have a precise idea of both these realms at the same time you should trade use a trade-off Sometimes it's important for you to have a clear idea about time, but sometimes it's important to have a more clear idea about the frequency. So we are using a trade-off here. There are some tools that you can have both with a good resolution of both time and frequency, but uh, I'm not going to mention it until uh, maybe next 10 videos because it is something quite uh, important and also you should know uh, a lot of things before that okay uh, this is FFT okay uh, we talked about frequency zero uh, what does it mean it is the DC value something that don't have frequency that doesn't change frequency zero means that something that does not change okay Something that does not change is bias, a DC. This is AC. These are AC. Zero frequency is specifically this. So it means if I add something here to our signal, a mean value to our signal. And here, let's see it in the plot. Okay. We should expect something at this frequency zero. So let's plot it again. Press F5. Okay, you see our frequency zero. We have something now because we have a DC value or a mean value. Okay, this is something that you should have a good idea about it. Sometimes, and usually uh, it happens, uh, we don't uh, want to see this one because it ruined the whole shape. Okay, uh, in order to make this clearer, uh, we have, uh, we usually you do this. Uh, we subtract the original signal that we are talking about from its mean value, okay? But here we know this is the mean value, so we don't use it. Okay, 
and let's see our signal with the bias yes you see the bias is it this thing is not at zero you see all of it above subplots are at the start from zero this one started at five so this is our bias if you use an integral and uh, calculate the the energy in this one you get five because it has a mean value if you use an integral try to calculate the energy here it will be zero because we don't have any mean value it's zero all the positive part uh, cross the negative part so uh, they are even out and they are zero so in a period uh, not a half a period or something like that okay uh, maybe what happened if we multiply the signal by a number? We should see a raise in our frequency band, but the mean value doesn't change. So let's see together. Let's okay. You definitely see a raise here with respect to the previous one and you can see the domain of amplitude change here the dynamic range change here from 10 to minus 10 okay this is something that you can compare with the above subplots so um, this is the th three important thing that you should know about FFT and MATLAB okay and uh, probably you can uh, analyze uh, many signals with this one and I'm gonna mention a lot of tools like STFT and uh, maybe the most important one is STFT and also uh, MFCC uh, in order to see both realms and both domain at the same time Okay, guys, I think this is it. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed and learned something today. Please, please subscribe us and uh, leave a comment or two if you think uh, there's something that is wrong with this video or also if you have any question. Uh, have a good day. Bye.